simplifying rational expressions. Expressions, not equations, which means we can't solve them. We will just simplify them. We simplify expressions and we solve equations. Simplify meaning right is one, e one fraction. And rational, the first five letters of rational, ratio, and a ratio is better known as a fraction. So simplifying fractions. Three Roman numerals today. Add, subtract is one. Multiply is one. Divide is the third. So you may remember this already, but add and subtract are pretty similar in how you do them. Multiply and divide are different in how you handle them. Let's back up all the way to, I don't know what grade you learned how to add fractions in. Preschool. Not preschool. What does it take to add fractions, whether you're in preschool uh, or common, denominator. Common, common denominator? So what's the common denominator for this one going to be? 28. So this first one needs a 4. Second one needs a 7. Remember, you got to multiply top and bottom. That way you haven't changed the fraction. Like 2 sevenths is the same thing as 8 28 and 3 fourths is the same thing as 21 28 but the reason we put them over 28 is because when you get a common denominator you can keep the denominator and add the numerators and there's your answer that's old news I hope uh, that is simplified for us we like what is called improper fractions. There's nothing improper about that. But you do not have to change that. I can't... I can't reduce that. It is 1 and 128, but I don't even want to do that. Leave it like that. All right, well, let's do the same thing with variables now. 3 plus x over 2. I'm going to leave some space because I need to do some uh, denominator adjustments. Plus 4x over x minus 1. I can't get that x out of there. So I want a common denominator. How can I make those denominators match? Multiplying by each other is a good way to say it. So this first one, I'll put an x minus 1 on. And remember, whatever you multiply to the bottom, you got to multiply to the top. Now they're closer. So the second one needs an x plus 2, and then they would match. Uh, this time, since I know I'm combining the denominators, I'm going to be smart and just write it once. Don't need to write it twice anymore like I did up here. Um, let's distribute the 3. 3x three minus 3 plus distribute the 4x. 4x squared plus 8x. And then combine like terms. 4x squared plus 11x minus 3 all over x plus 2 x minus 1. We started with two fractions. We turned it into one fraction. We simplified a rational expression. x over x squared minus 25. Again, leave some space because we know we're going to have to do some denominator adjustments here. Plus 1 over x minus 5. Plus, we're going to do three fractions this time. 2x over x plus 5. I can't, I can't square root the pieces. I, I can't do that. 
But you're right to see that those are squares. I can factor it. X plus 5, X minus 5. So what does... Well, hold on here. Let's slow down. You're saying a bunch of things that may be right. You just got to do the X plus 5 in the middle one and X minus 5 in the last one. There we go. This one needs an X plus 5 so that they match. So that the denominators match. And the last one needs an X minus 5. So I have my common denominator. So I will just write it once because it's in common. I don't need to write it more than once. x plus x plus 5 plus 2x squared minus 10x. And then clean up work. 2x squared x plus x minus 10x would be minus 8x plus 5 all over x plus 5, x minus 5. Get a common denominator, add them. I think you've done this before. Let's do one more of these, and then we'll switch to multiplying. 3 over x squared minus 25 minus 3 over x squared plus 6x plus 5. Ew. It's not as ew as you might think. It's disgusting. What should we do oh, no, first? It's not. You can simplify both of them. Let's factor. <laughs> x plus 5, x minus 5. X plus 5, x plus 1. So first fraction needs an x plus 1 in the bottom. And whatever you do to the bottom, you got to put in the top as well. Keep things equal. And then the other one needs an x minus 5. Now they have a common denominator. Yes, you did do this in algebra 2. So 3x plus 3. Oh, and here's the reason I picked this one to do. What do I need to be careful about? Negative. That negative sign. I think I'm just going to attach it to the 3 and distribute the negative 3. So minus 3x plus 15. Oh, that's kind of neat. The 3x three go away. 18 over x plus 5, x plus 1, x minus 5. Make the denominators match. Add the numerators. Simple, hopefully. Let's multiply. And just like we did on uh, the add problems, let's do a let's do an old school problem first. This is uh, this is sixth grade math, I think, because my sixth grader was doing this a couple weeks ago. Two ninths times three eighths. Now, so how do you multiply? I don't need a common denominator. I don't need a common denominator to multiply. Common mistake. I don't need to do any of this. I don't. I don't cross multiply. Just multiply across. It's it's equal to six over seventy-two. Seventy-two. Yeah. But then I look to reduce. Let's see, 72 divided by 6, does that work? 
If you're not sure if it works, pick a smaller number. Like, I know I can divide by 2. So 3 over 36. And like, oh, wait, now I can divide by 3. It was 12. 112. Which means I could have divided it from the get-go. Now, let's make this, let's do this an easier way. So my sixth grader kept doing it this way, and I kept trying to tell him, Micah, there's an easier way. Like, don't do this. You get big numbers this way. What could I have done first? Simplify the fraction. Simplify the fraction. So, so 2 and 8 can become 1 fourth. And 3 and 9 could become 1 and 3. And we get 1 12. So it works either way. That's just the easier way to go. You won't have a calculator for this. Eventually, yes. And besides, on ones like this, the calculator wouldn't help. See, so we couldn't use it then, but if we if we faster, we could. What? Do the same. Pick it up. Let's uh. I bet I wrote that down wrong. Make it okay, bad. There we go. Before I did that, what was going to... Nothing was going to cancel. That's why I was like, wait a minute. I mean, I guess that could happen, but let's make it like this. Now what can cancel? X plus 3. Um, what about the X minus 1 and the X plus 1? No, because Those are different. I can't cancel those. So really, there wasn't... I mean, I guess we multiplied them, but all we really looked to do was cancel things that would cancel. Negative x plus 7 times 5 times x minus 2. Over x plus seven. What's that? Put oh, you like to put it over one? Yeah. You can do that. Then you then you just multiply. Then you just do it. What can I simplify? Yeah. X plus seven. Yeah. So the big thing is we canceled the x plus sevens, but that negative's still there. So be careful. You can make it a negative one if you like. So negative 5 times x minus 2. And we could leave that like that. We may not want to distribute. But then you, then you multiply by negative 1. I did. Oh. Negative. So then you don't do anything. Tyler, negative so we're 1 divided by 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 multiplied by 5. Exactly. Good. Let's do one more multiply, and then we'll switch to division. Kind of racing through the multiplying. 10 over x squared plus 4x plus 4, thank you, times x squared minus 4 over 2x squared minus 2x minus 4. What will absolutely make me throw something at you is if you say, oh, look, the 10 and the 4, that could reduce to like 5 halves, right? And the x squared and the x squared, those will reduce. Why can't I do that? Because they're on top of each other. It's not because they're top and bottom. That's what, well, that would be a reason for doing it. Because yeah. there's other ones there. They're, they're not being multiplied. You can only cancel things that are being multiplied. You can't cancel things that are being added or subtracted. So that 10 is eligible to be reduced, but that 4 is not. So I can't reduce anything right now. What could I do that might help me see some things to reduce? So let's factor everybody. Let's see, x plus, that'd be x plus 2 and x plus 2. Top right would be x plus 2, x minus 2. 
Now I see some things that will cancel. Um, this bottom one, I'm going to take out a 2 first. Kind of an intermediate step before I finish factoring. Let's see. Multiply to 2, add to 1. Negative 2 and positive 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 would be negative 2. Negative 2x plus x would be negative x. Once everything is factored, now we can look for things that will cancel. Can you only cancel up and down, not Correct. You can't cancel things that are, well, there's nothing that matches, but you can only cancel things, one thing from the top, one thing from the bottom. So x plus 2's oh, as long as one's in the top one's in the bottom can you cancel in the same fraction yep you can cancel in the same fraction as long as one's in the top one's in the bottom anything else I can cancel well not cancel I guess but reduce the 10 and the 2 5 and 1 on some of these problems the key is just being neat and that's a struggle for some of you. Mm -hmm. But be super neat. Otherwise, if you write this all messy and you start canceling things, then you can't see what you canceled and what's left. So be neat so that when it gets to the end of the problem, you can see in the top is left a 5. In the bottom is left x two. an x plus 2. Right, I canceled one of them, but one of them is still left. I couldn't, couldn't they got to pair up to cancel. And an x plus 1, and that 1, but that didn't really do anything. So there's my answer. So factor and cancel. Roman numeral 3, where things get fun. Flip the, flip the thing. Flip the thing. All right, that, that's on the right track. And I'll even write it a weird looking way maybe just for the first one. Two fifteenths divided by oops, let's make that six fifths. That way it makes it a little harder. Two fifteenths divided by six fifths. Um, so I could write that as two fifteenths divided by six fifths. That means the same thing. But then some of you know a rhyme and some of you know a, a quick little saying. When dividing fractions, I heard don't be shy, but I heard you guys say don't ask why. Don't cry. Don't cry. Yeah, I heard don't you cry. When dividing fractions, don't you cry. What's the rest of that? That's the important part. What about multiply? Flip. I prefer just keep it, change it, flip it. Keep it, change it, flip it. Cry if you need to. Oh, come on. It's not even KFC. Ty, did you have a question? Okay. Keep it, change it, flip it. So keep the first one. This is the problem with keep it, change it, flip it is all the it's. Like, well, what are we talking about? Keep it. Keep the first one. Change it to multiplication. And flip it, meaning flip the second one. So it's a little quicker than the rhyme, but it's not as descriptive as the rhyme. When dividing fractions, don't you cry. Flip the second fraction and multiply. It's not as good. I prefer keep it, change it, flip it. But you got to know what all the it's refer to. Keep the first one, change it to multiplication, and then flip the second one. All right. After you keep it, change it, flip it, you've turned it into a multiplication problem. And so we've done these before. Let's see. Uh, again, let's simplify before we multiply and make our life easier. Uh, so you fif 5 and 15 would be 1 and 3. And then the other one's 1 and 3. The other one's also 1 and 3. So it's 1 over 9. So it's 1 9. 1 6 is a fun wrong answer to that one. 
yeah. Not a mistake you would make, though. All right, x over x minus 2. So let's step it up a little bit and get rid of the numbers and use the variables. x over x minus 2 all over 3x over x squared minus 4. Which is x plus 2, x minus 2. So maybe we make a little note of that real quick. So keep it. So keep the first one, change it to multiplication, flip the second one. So the flipping the second one is what gets complicated, especially if you're trying to factor and flip all at once. So I would recommend writing it out rather than trying to flip it and factor it all at once. That's a lot to, for your brain to do. x plus 2, x minus 2, all over 3x. And now it's a multiplication problem. X minus 2's will go away. What else will go away? Anything? The X's. The X's. So be careful. Just the X's, right? Because it's 3 times X. So you can cancel the X. So we're left with X plus 2 over 3. Correct. Yes, yes. So x over 3x, a little side note here, the x's cancel, you're left with one third. As opposed to x over x cubed, what would that be? 1 over x squared. Good question. Because yes, if you get going, sometimes people reduce that to 1 over 2x. And they're sort of thinking the exponent rule when they do that. x over 5 minus 3 all over 4 plus 2 over x. Oh man, that's not, that's awful looking. If I keep it, change it, flip it, it doesn't. Wait, why don't, wait, why don't you solve the first one, solve the second one, and then do it? What do you mean solve the first one? Like, put x, my, oh, geez, x over 5 minus 3 over 1. That's exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> Let's fix the top, fix the bottom, and then we can keep it, change it, flip it. And when we say fix, we mean make it one fraction. Because I can't really KCF right now. I mean, I could write it, but it would be a mess, and it really wouldn't help anything. So fix the top, fix the bottom, then I can keep it, change it, flip it. It's exactly what you said, Tyler. So fixing the top, let's see, that needs a 5 in the bottom, which means a 5 in the top. Fixing the bottom, let's see, this guy needs a, what does he need in the, what denominator? He needs an x in the bottom, which means he gets an x in the top. So I've got x minus 15 over 5 all over 4x plus 2 over x. Fix the top. Fix the bottom. Now we can do keep it, change it, flip it. And what reduces? It's kind of annoying when this happens. Nothing. Nothing. So, yeah, you could just leave it like that. I suppose you could rewrite it and make it look a little bit neater. Find something to throw at you for that. What? This x is being added too, so I can't cancel those. Oh, from the oh. beginning. Yeah, it's 4x over x plus 2 over x. Yeah, but if I cancel those, I'm right back to where I started. But no, because you'd be 6 over x. Wait, why don't you just put 4 over 1? No, because if I cancel those, it doesn't have a denominator, and then I can't add it. 
I put those on there so that I would have a common denominator so that I could add the top uh, and make it one fraction. One okay. So yeah, back here you could cancel those, but then you're right back where you started. That's not where you wanted to be. Wait, so you, so you. Let's do another one of those. One fifth minus one over x, all over x minus five. Not keep I, it, I, change I, it, I, flip it. You kept it, change it, kept it. Yeah. KCK. Mm -hmm. Number three. One fifth minus one over x over x minus five. Fix the top. So, what does this first denominator need? In order to make a match, it needs an x. The other one needs a five. Remembering now, what, if it bugs you to see all of this, all that stuff going on at once, then what you can do is work one problem at a time. Like all I'm doing is doing one fifth minus one over x. So that's x minus five over five x. So I fix the top. That was step one. Fix the top. Over, fix the bottom. What does it take to fix the denominator? Nothing. The bottom's fine. I don't think I want to cross them out right here because that's that's a little dangerous. Let's do keep it, change it, flip it. Keep it. Change it. Flip it. But how do I flip x minus 5? There's nothing to flip. Yeah, you can put it over one if you need to, and then flip it one over. Oh, this one this one works out for us. One over five x. One over five x. Some people can cancel it here, but most people, if they cancel those x minus fives there, they can't figure out what to do with what's left. It's a lot safer to do keep it, change it, flip it because then stuff ends up in the right place. If you try to cancel it there, you end up making a mess of things. One more. 5 over x plus 2 over 1 third plus 2 over x plus 2. Five over x plus two over one third plus two over x plus two. So fix the top. What does it take to fix the top? Nothing. Nothing. We're good. Fix means make it one fraction. So we're good. We got the one fraction on the top. Now change our focus. Fix the denominator. How and what's it take to add those? Common denominator. So what does the first denominator need? And what does the second denominator need? A three. So focusing on the, the bottom here. So the denominator is three times x plus two. Can you do the numerator without me having to write it all out so I can save myself a little space here? What's the numerator going to become? 6 parentheses plus 2. No, because I'm adding them right now. x plus 2 oh, plus 6. No, I'll we'll write it then. x plus 2 plus 6. Still have the top. The bottom is x plus 8 over 3 times x plus 2. So this was an add problem. Basically, these problems combine two add problems and one divide problem, which becomes a multiply problem. 
So you can cover everything in two, this one problem. Now, X plus twos, those are probably going to cancel, but I would not recommend canceling them right there because you still get lost with what's left. So do the keep it, change it, flip it. It just makes life so much easier. Because then it, become, it becomes really obvious what cancels, I think. Well, it can cancel the x plus 2s. And so I'm left with, oh, I was almost, I almost marked out that 3. 15 in the top, x plus 8 in the bottom. Fractions, fractions, fractions. Fractions, fractions, fractions. That's it for notes. Get your, your packet out here. Just, again, it's a packet, so don't panic. You're used to this now. Just worksheet one. Through 10. Through 10. No, not through 10. So you're doing worksheet one tonight. I need to post this.